If you have been meaning to get better depth of field in your pictures using Lightroom and can't afford those F1.2s and 1.4s, then this video is definitely for you because I'm gonna show you what I taught myself and how to fake depth of field using nothing but a couple of masks and some sliders in Lightroom. So having said that, let's jump into it and let's get started. Mm, 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 mm. So good to be seen and it's even better to see what's going on. Welcome back to yet another video. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fake it until you make it. That is to say how to fake depth of field in Lightroom using nothing but artificial intelligence while you can actually pony up the dough for those very expensive primes. And having said that, let's jump into Lightroom and show you exactly what I mean. So before we get started, I figured I'd share a uh, backstory of this photo. This unsuspecting couple is one that I photographed during my most recent trip to San Francisco. Um, if the background of this picture seems familiar, then you're probably a 90s kid like myself and uh, recognize the painted ladies from Full House, the 90s sitcom that we all came to know and love. And so uh, this is Alamo Square directly in front and across the street from the painted ladies, these Victorian homes that you see here. And so the story of this is I saw this unsuspecting couple just uh, taking in the sights and I sneaked behind them to grab a picture of them just, uh, you know, soaking in the sights. And so this is the picture that we're gonna be working with. And uh, for the sake of this tutorial, of course, and to respect your time, I went ahead and subject masked them out already. And I edit them to my liking so that we can start from uh, the point that I really want to bring to your attention, which is the reverse uh, and duplicate mask. So in case you didn't know about this already, definitely jump into Lightroom and give it the uh, update so that you can have this at your disposal. So now that the uh, subject, the couple, of course, has been masked, what I want to do is head on over to these three points right here, these dots, if you will. And what you want to do is choose the option that says duplicate and invest. So this, uh, this is not only going to give you a second mask, but it's actually going to select everything that was not already selected in the first one, namely the couple. So AI is going to do its thing. It's by no means going to be perfect and we're not going to be uh, too you know, meticulous about that. Although I will say this, you definitely want to be zooming in and out to make sure that your mask is nice and crisp and tack sharp. Anyway, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to speed things up now. This is the um, the part that is going to separate you from uh, the subject. Now, the first thing that I want to do, and this is, I guess, more along the lines of a personal preference. I like a dark and moody look. And the final render of this image, I'm going to share at the end of the video. If you want to check it out right here, Francis Alvarez Photography on Instagram. So the first thing that I wanted to do, and I remember doing for this picture, is lowering the exposure of that second mask. That is to say, the background, as you can see, we had somewhat of a cloudy sky that day, a very atypical for San Francisco. And now the uh, you can tell that the buildings are already uh, looking a lot better. Uh, I like to crank the, uh, the contrast just a little bit to get more of that. And then the highlights, I want to bring them down because, again, dark and moody. Um, and the shadows, uh, maybe just raise those up a little bit, not too much. And we're not going to get too carried away with editing the actual picture. I just wanted to show you the technical aspect of this. Now, this is where the, uh, the fun happens here. Um, saturate and, and temperature up a little bit. Um, the main sliders that you want to focus when you want to fake depth of field are going to be the texture, clarity, dehaze, and the sharpness. Okay. The first and most important to me is definitely the texture. I like to scroll all the way down and slide this all the way down to like 50, okay? Because if you get too carried away, you're gonna make it look like it's a cheap iPhone editing app that you literally got for free. You don't wanna do that. It's sophisticated software, so you wanna make sure that you use it to the best of your ability. So I like to hover around 50. So that's technically halfway. And as you can tell, it's already looking like a much different picture. The clarity, I want to bring all the way to 25, maybe halfway to 50. That's a, that's a good point uh, to be at for specifically this picture. It may vary depending on the picture that you use to, uh, to edit. Um, dehaze, I do like to dehaze the image just a tad. And then the sharpness, I also bring this down to 25. So having said that, um, this is already looking like a very different image. As you can see, the before and after, 
um, there's not a lot of depth of field in comparison to what you now did regarding the depth of field. So that's basically the gist of it. I could continue editing to uh, this picture, but again, I'm going to show you the end result here in a second. So that's how I taught myself to fake depth of field until I can afford those $3,000 F1.2 85 RF and the 50 millimeter F1.2 RF. So I hope you got a little something out of this video. That's ultimately what I want to do here. I'm going to be a person of value to you. If you got a little something out of this video and you learned something, hey, stick that thumb. You know where it definitely helps the channel. And if you're new here, I would love to keep growing this community. So stick around by subscribing, hit that bell so that you don't miss a single one of my episodes. And in case you want to, um, you know, recommend a video that you would love for me to tackle, uh, whether it's gear review or another tutorial, let me know in the comments. I will definitely consider it for future iterations on this channel. My name is Francis. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. And again, if uh, you're brand new to the channel, would love to have you. Stick around. See you in the next video. That was awkward.